Oh man, this place is freaking insane. Ah, tak ada. Okay, tak ada. Ah, memang tak ada. Memang tak ada. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we just had some run-in with some undercover cops that were trying to confiscate drones. I think uh, right now drones are sort of illegal. Right now here, we are Data Medica. It's 11:30 at night. We're going to be celebrating. Uh, 2020, so happy 2020. Uh, if you're watching this clearly, it's going to be in the new year. I think this is a great place to test out this lens, uh, the Canon 35mm f1.4 Mark II. Let's go. So the 35mm is one of those interesting focal lengths that I think is a really coveted lens by a lot of street photographers, a lot of wedding photographers, a lot of candid shooters. And one of the main reasons for that is because of its very natural look as a 35 you know. As a lens, it produces very natural looking images, something that's very similar to the way your eyes look. And that's why I think a lot of people love this kind of uh, prime prime lenses over let's say a 24 or a 14 mil or even a 50 mil because 35 you can capture more of the scene and the context of the subject that you're shooting you know and more than that it, it doesn't have a lot of distortion which creates a very nice looking image especially when you're shooting portraits or in this case candid portraits or street photography <laughs> I think what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and camp out here first and wait for hopefully what might have fireworks. Try and get some shots and then we'll continue <laughs> talking a bit later. So I think they're going to blow up the fireworks already. So we're going to try and get ready for that. much stuck here because everybody's trying to go in everybody's trying to go out and <laughs> yeah we're like a standstill uh, one of the reasons why the original 35 was so coveted is because of its wide look and at an f1.4 you know like you get really really interesting images that are at shallow depth of field and also at a generally relatively wide angle lens and that's what I personally kind of prefer. I would prefer less range and a faster aperture because I think it allows you to be a lot more creative with your shots, you know, like you can control your depth of field versus like if you had a zoom, you could like zoom really far, but then like I think artistically the 1.4 or fast aperture lenses are a much more creative choice for photographers than it is like longer focal lengths. Oh, it's cleared up. Let's go. Yeah. Supposed to be New Year, but Malaysian habits don't change. like you can see anything from here is like if you blur it out which is honestly a great place oh wow Intel pula <laughs> uh, which is a really good test for the bokeh for this lens and whilst you know 1.4 really opens up and does really nice you know it really has a really blur out of focus feel at the same time I kind of feel like the bokeh balls are very sharp it doesn't really have like a nice fall off compared to like let's say the 50mm 1.2 the EF version but still, like, you can get out-of-focus backgrounds which are very, very nice. It's just that, you know, bokeh is very subjective and it's whether you like it or not. And personally, not really my favourite.
So the first thing when we're talking about reviewing lenses is obviously the physical aspects or the build quality of the lens. And I want to say is the first thing that you notice picking up this lens is number one, it is longer than the previous version. And not only that, it's a lot heavier, it's a lot heftier than the previous version or in fact, it's a lot heftier than a lot of other 35mm primes in this category, especially in the 1.4 category. Uh, that being said, the weight, especially when it's on a DSLR or a chunky, a big DSLR, like let's say the 5D Mark IV or 1DX2, uh, you, it really feels well balanced, so it's not like it's falling forward a little bit, but if you put, let's say, on an EOS R or a mirrorless camera, you're adapting it because you have to put like an adapter in front, the weight shifts a lot forward, so it kind of feels like you're fighting the lens, so I would say that the, the lens will fit best on a DSLR. And not only that, I just want to say another thing, the build quality of the lens, while it feels very sturdy and definitely feel it could last a few knocks, uh, I do want to say that the, the, the whole casing of the lens feels very plastic-like uh, as compared to the version 1 or even the 24mm that's shooting me right now. These older prime lenses always felt a little bit more sturdier in terms of like the overall casing. Uh, this just feels light and I feel like that helps with the weight. Uh, but then again, that's just something that you keep in mind, uh, especially at a lens of this price point. And also, the lens hood is freaking ugly. Something when we were speaking about build quality is weather sealing, and that is to be expected, <laughs> especially at a lens of this price point. Uh, a lot of other 35mm 1.4s don't have weather sealing and I've taken this in the rain. Uh, not really like torrential pouring rain, uh, but may slight to heavy uh, rain and the lens still works fine. Still has no fungus inside and so like if you're talking about weather sealing, this lens definitely is. Though if you want full weather sealing, you gotta have a filter in the front, so just keep that in mind. And personally, UV filters in my opinion don't really affect the image, especially for the, uh, for the things that I do. So I have a UV filter pretty much just fixed on the lens for the entire time. Uh, they're currently having a concert right now and it's really really loud so I'm trying to get like in between scenes, in between shows. Uh, but while AF on this lens is absolutely amazing in good light or in very dim situations, in very dark situations, this lens struggles a lot. Even right now, even in backlit situations and very, very dark situations when there's no light on the subject, the lens really struggles. And I think that's a common thing with all kinds of lenses, like even expensive lenses, even top of the line lenses also struggle when there is no light on the subject. Yo, what's up? So obviously we are somewhere else different. This is future Sam speaking. <laughs> Unfortunately, we could not finish the entire review there because everything just went a little bit too crazy. Uh, there was too much noise, so we could not record anything. But uh, right now, what I want to continue with this review is I want to talk about two things that are most important to me when we're looking at a lens. And the first one is obviously going to be image quality and the second one, uh, autofocus or really reliability. Uh, with autofocus. First thing that I do want to say is that the lens that's recording me right now on the EOS RP is actually the 35 1.42. So really, I want to talk the first thing is obviously image quality and really that's the most important thing for any lens if anybody wants to choose it. And that, how does the lens really perform or what does the kind of images that's being rendered by these lenses First thing when we're talking about image quality, it's obviously going to be the sharpness. Really, sharpness is the one thing that really makes this lens shine the most. Out of all the lenses that I own, say for the 70 to 200 version, uh, 2.8 version 3, this is my sharpest lens that I own. It's it's just it's just crazy how much detail that you can get when your subject is in focus. The the image looks really really good. It just pops out from uh, from the scene and that's what I'm really looking for especially with wide or fast lenses like this 1.4 whilst in 1.4 yes I can I do notice a slight drop off uh, in sharpness compared to like let's say 2.8 it's not as drastic as say my 51.2 where really when you shoot at 1.2 it is it is not to say that it's not sharp it's just soft compared to 2.8 or f4 and you can really tell the difference but then when you're shooting with this 35 1.4 you can't really tell the difference whether you can't really tell sharpness difference too much unless you really like pixel peep versus like or when you're using 1.4 versus f4 besides sharpness is the contrast or the micro contrast that comes up from this lens i i find that when i first shot with this lens it it was Images were not only sharp, but the color reproduction and the contrast of the lens really helped the subject pop, which is something that's only quite that's really quite reserved for more expensive lenses. 
like for example this lens. Uh, chromatic aberration really I haven't gone through, I haven't really found much of an issue with chromatic aberration on this lens. I think I have at one point but it's always very easy to fix uh, especially with the coating on this lens like it reduces a lot of it. And another thing is vignetting. Now vignetting wide open I will admit that there is quite a, a fair bit of vignetting uh, but really I just remove it in post and it's not a huge deal breaker and that's why like I don't really have any raw images that I keep that have vignetting or as you can see but really it is to be expected for a, for a lens of this price like you do expect something that is sharp especially wide open I'm not gonna buy a 1.4 lens just to always shoot it at f4 you know but then again I don't always shoot it at 1.4 and the main reason for that is which the next point uh, is autofocus reliability. While I would say that this lens is a lot more accurate compared to let's say my 24 1.4 or my 50 1.2, I do get a little bit of AF unreliability, especially wide open. Uh, when you're shooting at f2, 2.8, f4, really don't have much of an issue there. Uh, it's the it's really when you're wide open uh, that the, this, the lens does struggle a bit. Um, I do want to say also that I know it's supposed to be a USM motor but I think I might have dropped this lens a couple of times and so like when I'm focusing I can hear a little bit of the sound so that's something that you want to keep in mind. What I think pairs very well is with Canon's dual pixel autofocus especially when you know when, when you especially when you put it on face detect or eye detection really this lens just shines very very well in autofocus. It, it snaps on to focus really really quickly. For manual focusing the focusing ring is absolutely incredible it's so nice to uh, use manual focus on this and it has a very nice focus throw and what's very nice with that is especially for video when you're manual focusing you can really fine-tune the details a little bit instead of just like a quick turn on certain uh, on certain lenses of this category man we finally escaped the madness that is 2019, it is officially 2020 as we are recording this segment. Um, I think just to wrap up this entire review, is this lens worth it and should you pay the amount of money that Canon is asking for for it? In my opinion, yes. Uh, the main reason you're buying this is not so much for the f1.4 or a 35. It is still New Year's Eve, everybody's on a high. But in my opinion, you're not really buying a 35mm 1.4 alone. You are buying the consistency. You are buying a reliability. You are buying the reliability. You are buying the reliability of a lens like this. And when you're shooting professionally, and when you're comparing other kind of lenses, the problem is is that the problem is is that a lot of these lenses or these third-party lenses, they don't have the consistency or the focus accuracy as this lens does. And truly, I feel like that's where all the money is going to. You're going into buying a lens that you know will work wherever you put it in. There will be some situations like really pitch black darkness where it's going to be difficult to focus and things like that. But overall, for majority of the shoots that you're going to place this lens in, it's going to function well. It's going to, it's going to get pictures and it's going to get good pictures and it's all up to you how you use this lens. And that's the main reason why you're spending this much for a lens at this caliber. In my opinion, whilst this lens is pricey and it is expensive, it is, as, as a professional photographer, this lens is worth it. And really, if I could do it again, I would buy this lens all over again. Definitely. Uh, I do not regret buying this lens. I do not regret having it. It's changed a lot of the stuff that I shoot and I mostly shoot on this lens for majority of the work that I do and it's crazy. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope this helped you out. If any questions about this lens, please let me know down below. We're going to wrap up really quickly. And I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye. Happy New Year.